Happy Monday. It is the season of the harvest. I am so excited about this time of year. Um, every year during this time of year, I get excited. First of all, I love the cold winter months, even though I live in California and it's not really cold here, but I always uh, take the cold as an opportunity to hibernate, to stay in, um, to get warm, get some chili cornbread or whatever it is that you do, um, curl up by the fireplace or by the stove, okay? Because, you know, back in the day, we used to have to curl up by the stove, um, but just get warm and get comfortable and start creating, start dreaming, start thinking. So I am starting off harvest season with another smoothie. Um, this is a, a new pathway for me. Um, ever since I lost well over 100 pounds uh, 15 years ago, 14, 15 years ago, um, I have not big, been a big consumer of sugar uh, because uh, sugar actually causes a whole lot of things to go wrong in your body. So I have pretty much been a um, non-sugar um, kind of eating person, and that includes um, lots of fruit. I don't drink a lot of fruity juices and, you know, so on and so forth. However, I am aware of the antioxidant power of raspberries and blueberries and blackberries and uh, the cleansing power of spinach and kale and all of those things. So I'm going to make a smoothie and enjoy it and kick off harvest season, right? So uh, join me for this. Okay, I'm gonna grab, um, I'm gonna need my coconut water. Um, all right, so here's my coconut water. I got that. Uh, I am gonna take all of these berries. <clears throat> I'm going to take all of these berries. I've got raspberries, blueberries, and blackberries. And I'm going to put them in the blender. Lots of good stuff. Okay. Um, more berries. Uh, ooh, these little blackberries look like little tree grapes. I just want to eat them. Can't do that, right? Just got to put it on in here. Get this thing going. Okay, so I've got all of my berries um, in the blender. Uh, now I'm going to add some bananas. Um, when I first tried this, I only had one banana. But I think I'm going to... Uh, no, I'm not going to try two. That's going to be a little too much. I'm, I love banana pudding, but I don't like it to be... I don't like for there to be too many bananas. So I'm going to use that same theory here. With this smoothie, I'm just going to take this banana... I'm going to cut it up and I'm going to throw the pieces in here. Uh, okay, throw my stuff in there. And I'm doing this because um, I want to share this experience. Uh, excuse me, I dropped one. God, make dirt, dirt, dirt don't hurt, but that don't work here. You, I can't eat you. If I wasn't on camera, who knows? I'm just telling y'all the truth. Um, okay, uh, since one of my little pieces of banana dropped, I think I'm going to grab another banana and just put maybe a third of it in here. Okay, here we go. All right, and this is only for me, okay? So I also need my spinach. Oh. Here's my spinach. I have baby spinach. I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna take some handfuls of this. I'm gonna drop it in here. I'm gonna take some handfuls of this, drop it in here. Okay, that looks good. I might even throw a little more spinach in there. And might even just throw um okay i've got my coconut water all right so trying something new um lots of people i'm aware of have been having health challenges so i am going to join the mission myself and i'm gonna get a because my uh, berries were not frozen and i want a little bit of a um frosty kind of feel so i'm gonna add in a little bit of ice just a little just a little I'll put that in there okay uh here's the top 
to my blender. And let me see how this goes. All right. <laughs> excited about my smoothie okay and I've got a little secret I'm just gonna I'm gonna add a few drops of stevia just to give it that little extra kick of sweetness just a couple of little drops I'm just using a dropper full of stevia and I'm gonna mix it up again now that it's all okay that's it uh that is it all right i need my glass okay i'm gonna pour some in my glass there we go and then i'm going to add i'm gonna add some granola on top yes. this is actually a honey roasted granola and um i'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in here okay so there we go so I have this smoothie and um, I have some things I'm going to do today. And what I'm most excited about is helping as many people um, as possible get their finances in order, enjoy this holiday season, and learn to live in the freedom that I have come to enjoy. <sighs> ah, yes, yes, yes. I'm so excited. Okay. Who should you go to for financial advice? Author, TV personality, and celebrity financial coach, Lynn Richardson. Let's bring in financial expert, Lynn Richardson. To my girl, Lynn Richardson. We have Dr. Lynn Richardson. Good morning. Financial expert, Lynn Richardson. Lynn knows what's up. We're joined by financial expert, Lynn Richardson, author of Get Your Money Back, Tax Deductions You Never Knew About. Be at peace with the money that you have, because everybody knows money cannot buy happiness. No. To learn more about Lynn Richardson's webinars, books, and online courses, please go to lynnrichardson.com. The more money you make, the more the IRS will take. So if you go from making $75,000 to $150,000, you're not going to see $75,000 divided by 12 on your paycheck. As a matter of fact, I know people who get a raise from 100,000 on their job to 200,000, and they've actually seen less on their check because the more money you make, the more tax brackets you enter into. I remember my first check um, went from 10,000 to 20,000, a pay period. I was looking for this check. Now, let's be clear, I was living check to Monday, so I had already spent the money, okay? Mm, mm, mm -hmm. I knew the check was coming. So when I got the $10,000 check, my net pay was $8,500. I was married with three children, five exemptions. So I had five allowances on my W-4. I thought that's how it worked. So when I was getting this $20,000 commission, I thought, mm, I'll have $16,000, $17,000. Let me tell you something. I got the check. The check was like $9,000. Let me tell you, I almost passed out right there in the office. I got dizzy. <laughs> then I said, child, you can't die because you need your money. I said, you right. So I went into the office <laughs> and I called the IRS. People said, well, why'd you call the IRS? Because they had my money. Who else you gonna call? 
I can call the HR people. They don't have my money. I'm looking at the check. It says FICA them, so that's who I'm calling. So I called the IRS, and I got on the phone. I told them my situation. I didn't even know who to call or what to say. All I know is half my check is gone, and I need it back. So they heard my story, and they said, oh, we're going to put you on with a withholding agent. I thought, whoo, child, they got somebody named that? Okay, you got a withholding agent. So I was ready. I was already counting the minutes to when I was going to get my money. So the withholding agent came on, and she started to ask me all these questions by like question number 10 or 11 I started to get nervous she put me on hold came back and her calculation was only two pennies different than my check that's when I learned the more money you make the more the IRS will take I did not think that when you grow in life that you make more money and get less that just didn't seem fair to me. So the first thing is to spend less money. The next thing is yes, to get more money, multiple streams of income, a raise on your job, do some extra shifts. But the third ingredient is the single most important ingredient. And that is you have to get your money back. Mm. Well, guess what? That's what the IRS says. The IRS says, if you drive your car for business, you can get your money back. If you just go and drive for personal reasons, you don't. If you have a business dinner or business lunch, you can get your money back. If you take a business trip, you can get your money back. The IRS says this well over hundreds and hundreds of times. So 